up? This is the uh, highly anticipated TT Coyote hot rod. This hot rod is, um, well, first and foremost, this is about as hand built as I think you can get a car. Um, everything down to the wheels I made, the frame, the front axle, the body, the interior, all the pedal assembly, the intake, the manifolds, the, I mean, everything's handmade. So, um, this is number six as far as hot rods I built from scratch. Um, this is actually, um, this belongs to the guys that bought the flathead truck for me and um, they wanted this hot rod. Uh, when they came and picked that up, we, we got started on this. They kind of had a bad year in 15 and so it was kind of on hold for a little while, but um, we're really close to being done with it. It's you know, maybe another month. If I could just focus on it 100%, I could probably have it done in another 30 days or so, uh, which is something I might do just to just to knock it out and get some time with it before it gets cold. This car is a lot of ideas I had about building a hot rod um, that I wanted to do, and I, I pitched these ideas to the guys that, that own the other truck and uh, to the owners of this. I pitched those ideas to them and I showed them kind of what I was thinking and they were like, you build this car how you would build it for yourself if you were going to. And uh, the only thing I don't like is that uh, my, my attention can't be 100% on something nowadays. I have a lot of different projects and so I try and give everybody a piece of the pie, so. Ford Coyote motor, twin turbo, I uh, wanted it very streetable. I didn't want like crazy lag or anything. We're not going to put a lot of boost on it. It is just more of a show and go. So it's not going to be. We're not. We're not trying to set any records on horsepower or anything. You got to. You got to be realistic about what you're doing, and uh, and what you're making. So and what your purpose is. And is this a race car? No. Is it a street car? Yes. So you know, do we need to make a thousand horsepower? No, not really. But uh, is it going to have all those? wonderful turbo noises and sounds and and uh and be the tire blazing machine yes so and that's really what we can so let's take a walk around i'll show you some of the stuff um i always do a uh or on the hot rods i've built i've done a torsion bar set up in the front and so this one's no different i, I did a torsion bar suspension in the front that lends you to be able to do a lot of different stuff with the suspension in the, in the front and instead of having that lateral leaf that that um, is sort of in the way a lot of times. But under the grill shell, there is an intercooler and radiator. And I've seen some other people do twin turbo or turbo setups on hot rods and it, it always seems like that the, the intercooler setup can be a little out of place. Um, it looks like awkward and, and you know misplaced and you can't fit a grill shell around it. Well, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that it had that traditional grill shell. Not that this grill is traditional at all, but this is that's just how I roll. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't define myself as being a traditional builder. I'm not trying to build traditional hot rods. So uh, a friend of mine said that my work is more like this would be more of a uh, an art rod instead of a hot rod or rat rod. I don't call this a rat rod because I don't drag, I didn't drag anything out of the woods or out of, uh, out from under an oak tree or anything to build this car. You know, I might have bought some used stuff like the wheels and, and then modify them how I, how I need them to be. But other than that, most of the stuff's new. It's new material. It's all, you know. One thing I want to make sure that everyone that's watching this video doesn't understand is this is not the windshield. This bead rolled section is the windshield. This gets cut out. I just haven't got there yet. It's easier to deal with this panel if it still has this in here. <laughs> so if anybody's out there wanting to do their own work, this is easier to leave and cut out later than the opposite. So this is not the windshield. Uh, visor will go over this and a windshield wiper set up under here or whatever you know needs to happen so that it can pass inspection but on the engine exhaust manifolds I made from scratch the intake I made from scratch the fuel rails I made from scratch 
all the intercooler piping is all made. The intercooler was heavily modified to fit uh, uniquely around the radiator. The shocks have not been mounted yet, but I'm sort of working on that in the front. Uh, just got done doing these panels in the back and working on the side and roof panels. Under here is a pretty unique setup for the suspension. This car will lay down on the ground and um, it is not run on air, it's hydraulic. Now it's not like the hopping car's hydraulic, it, it runs slow um, in reference to that kind of hydraulic suspension. But um, the reason I went with a hydraulic suspension instead of air is uh, the amount of space that it takes up. The, the airbags tend to take up a lot of real estate, so um, and also airbags are sort of, you know, some of the AccuAir new, new setups are not to plug AccuAir because I've never used their stuff, but some of the newer stuff is, uh, I, think they, I think they're starting to get the technology down where the, the cars ride pretty good, but if you're gonna like make your own airbag setup, typically they don't really ride that great. They ride kind of like crap, so unless you get it like perfectly dialed, but I, uh, I wanted to be able to adjust the spring rate and make sure that the car rides really nice. Um, I think that this car is going to ride probably the best and drive probably the best out of the hot rods I've built to date. For one, it's got a rack on it, so that's going to help the steering for sure. Most of the time, traditionally in hot rods or rat rods or whatever, people use the cow steering, but with all the turbos and stuff, it just wasn't an option. So, Back to the interior, obviously everything's handmade, I made the whole pedal assembly. I made the whole entire, everything's tucked away so you can't see it. There's so much stuff under the dash, it's kind of ridiculous, but. This car will get doors in the back, either a door or doors. I'm probably not gonna specify in this video, but in the back, doors or door, and then you'll be able to use this as cargo. The owners originally talked about they wanted to do this as like a, a panel wagon, but we didn't want to, you know, fill in the windows. Um, and they wanted to be able to, to take stuff and I think they have like sponsorships with people and display like products and stuff in the back. So it'll be kind of like this like attention getter, you know, for at, if they're at an event or something, they can, they can uh, draw people in with the car. It'll be kind of like a sponsored type thing. Um, so, they wanted to have doors in the back. I like race car shit and I'm all into race car stuff so I hadn't seen a uh, Model A with a diffuser on it so I did that. But I didn't do that just because I wanted to put a diffuser on here. I actually did that for double purpose. Some of you probably know, some of you may not, but when you have a, a Model A that will lay down on the ground, um, if you're at all on un unlevel ground in the grass or whatever, the doors, you can't open the doors because they drag the ground. You gotta either set them up to where they don't hit the ground and even if you're on unlevel ground, it'll still hit. And uh, I didn't want that to be a problem in the back. I wanted them to be able to open the doors no matter what, if they were in a field or whatever, they can climb over the roof or whatever they need to do to get out. But if they're gonna display stuff in the back, I made this where the doors aren't gonna actually go all the way to the ground. So you can open it up and you can display your product in there and then you know, 